hypothalamus is extremely small and it is only 4 grams in weight which is basically 1% of brain weight. It is the size of the almond but it controls many important functions of the body and it basically connects nervous system with the endocrine system so regulates a lot of body functions. For this it has multiple nuclei and in this diagram which is basically a sagittal section sagittal section of the brain where we can see the anterior nuclei and the posterior nuclei arrangement of the hypothalamus so you see these nuclei form the posterior nuclei right where we have the dorsomedial nucleus then there is a posterior hypothalamus then a periphonical nucleus ventromedial nucleus periphonical nucleus basically fornix is there which is a tract and this we have seen in limbic system so surrounding that is periphonical nucleus then ventromedial nucleus mammillary bodies are there arcuate nucleus and periventricular zone and lateral hypothalamic area which is not shown here which we will see in another section that is the coronal section where we can see the medial and the lateral nuclei then we have the anterior nuclei so all these form the anterior nuclei that is the paraventricular nucleus medial preoptic area then posterior preoptic and anterior hypothalamic areas supraoptic nucleus and the hypothalamic infundibulum so there are anterior and posterior nuclei now let us see the arrangement of these nuclei in the lateral and medial aspect so this is the coronal section of the hypothalamus the diagram has been taken from Guyton so same nuclei you see how they are arranged laterally and medially so these are the medial nuclei this actually is 3d so this is the anterior part this is the posterior part okay so ventromedial nuclei we saw posteriorly right then this is the anterior nuclei which is paraventricular so anterior to posterior these particular nuclei are arranged medially and the other ones you see here lateral hypothalamic area is uh, shown lateral hypothalamic nuclei very important okay then there is supraoptic nuclei which is again laterally fine so we talk of hypothalamic nuclei in terms of their location whether it is anterior posterior and in the anterior posterior whether it is medial or lateral now let us move on to the functions of hypothalamus which is very very important long question for first year mbbs so what are these functions of hypothalamus yes hypothalamus is involved in lot of functions and these being one is control of the circadian rhythms, regulation of sleep-wake cycle, then it has endocrine functions, regulation of water balance, regulation of food intake, regulation of behavior which we saw in limbic system also, then autonomic control and the regulation of temperature. So you see hypothalamus controls most of the vegetative and endocrine functions of the body and also regulates the behavior especially the emotional behavior. So let us see each of these one by one how the various hypothalamic nuclei are involved in these functions. So first is circadian rhythm. So for circadian rhythm we have a hypothalamic nuclei that is suprachiasmatic nucleus which is important for maintaining the circadian rhythm and if we see the circuitry you see that during daytime light causes the stimulation of ganglion cells of retina and from there retino hypothalamic tract stimulates the suprachiasmatic nucleus and this in turn inhibits the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus paraventricular nucleus if you remember it was the anterior nucleus so there is inhibition of this so hence this further pathway will be inhibited because paraventricular nucleus is inhibited. Now you see the further pathway two things are very important one the stimulus is going to intermediolateral column of the spinal cord which is important for the sympathetic activity. So sympathetic outflow is from the intermediolateral column of the spinal cord. Then from here preganglionic sympathetic neurons reach to the superior cervical ganglion and from superior cervical ganglion that is postganglionic sympathetic neurons reach to the pineal gland so pineal gland is having a sympathetic supply and pineal gland is responsible for the secretion of melatonin 
so you see during day because this pathway is inhibited melatonin secretion will be less and during night this inhibition will not be there and melatonin secretion will be more okay now you see that this melatonin is very important in regulating the diurnal variations of various parameters of the body for example the diurnal variation in the secretion of the various hormones your temperature regulation and many others there are diurnal variation so what happens that body functions will show the diurnal variation for example that when there is decrease in the light so automatically the person will feel drowsy at night right and that is why it is said that uh, by evening we should reduce the amount of light in our home or we should not look at the mobile uh, late at night because then this increase in the melatonin is affected and our bodily functions are affected fine so that was about the circadian rhythms coming to the sleep wake cycle for the mechanism of sleep and the sleep wake cycle i have made a very detailed video the link of that video i will give in the description section you can have a look but just for the summary part i will deal here that uh, in hypothalamus there are nuclei which regulate the sleep wake cycle and very important one is ventrolateral preoptic nuclei very important nuclei which is a sleep promoting area and there are wake promoting areas as well one being tubromammillary nucleus and then there are auxinergic neurons very important so i would suggest you go to my video on mechanism of sleep and study in detail there that what is the role of hypothalamus and also the other brain stem areas which are involved in the sleep wake cycle next function is its endocrine functions so what are its endocrine functions now these endocrine functions again we study in detail in endocrine system so i'll just talk about summary here hypothalamus controls the secretion of both anterior pituitary as well as the posterior pituitary so what is happening here is you see that uh, pituitary hormones are basically controlling most of the endocrine glands right so there is release of the growth hormone is there prolactin is there which itself they are not acting on any glands as such but the pituitary secretions are stimulating the thyroid gland adrenal gland and also the reproductive organs right so from the hypothalamus there is release of hypothalamic releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones so there can be releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones which act on anterior pituitary so here there is anterior pituitary okay so various releasing hormones being gonadotropin releasing hormone corticotropin releasing hormone thyrotropin releasing hormone and you see they are stimulating the release of respective hormones from the pituitary corticotropin releasing hormone stimulates acth secretion which in turn acts on adrenal glands okay then there is thyrotropin releasing hormone which stimulates tsh secretion which in turn acts on thyroid gland okay then uh, gnrh stimulates lh and fsh secretion which in turn acts on testis and ovary similarly there are other releasing hormones as well the ones mean growth hormone releasing hormone and prolactin releasing hormone then there are some inhibiting hormones as well which include somatostatin which inhibits growth hormone secretion and prolactin inhibiting hormone which inhibits prolactin secretion so this is the effect of hypothalamus on anterior pituitary what about posterior pituitary well the posterior pituitary hormones are synthesized in the hypothalamus only so there are hypothalamic uh, neurons which synthesize the oxytocin okay and anti diuretic hormone that is the vasopressin so these are synthesized in the supraoptic nuclei and paraventricular nuclei oxytocin mainly in the paraventricular nuclei remember o p okay so oxytocin synthesized mainly in the paraventricular nuclei and adh mainly synthesized in the neurons of the supraoptic nuclei and these neurons extend into the posterior pituitary so the exon extends into the posterior pituitary and there is only the release of the hormone in the posterior pituitary so these are the endocrine functions of the hypothalamus and you see by virtue of this they are controlling most of the endocrine functions of the body and here oxytocin release it is important for uterine contractility and also for the milk ejection right 
then adh it is important for water balance so as we talk of water balance let us move on to the next function of the hypothalamus that is body water regulation so body water regulation it occurs by two methods one is by increasing the water intake it affects the amount of water which we are intaking and second is by the release of the adh so basically it is affecting the input intake of the water and exit of the water from the body right both the hypothalamus is controlling how so there are two stimuli one is hypovolemia hypovolemia that is decrease in the blood volume when that occurs there is release of angiotensin 2 which in turn acts on the thirst center okay so angiotensin basically acts on the subfornical region and ovlt or there are certain region it basically stimulates the intake of the water right second stimulus is hyperosmolarity that is increase in the solute concentration in the body fluids so that is detected by osmoreceptors again which are located in the anterior hypothalamus then basically what happens that when there is hyperosmolarity the neurons of this anterior hypothalamus shrink why because outside fluid is hypoosmolar and there is movement of water from these neurons to outside and this shrinking stimulates these neurons and then it leads to the generation of action potential that signal is sent to the supra optic area which i told you before is responsible for the release of antidiuretic hormone antidiuretic hormone in turn acts on nephron on three areas distal convoluted tubule collecting tubule and collecting duct okay and this leads to increased water reabsorption from the nephron that is decreased urinary volume so two methods of water regulation by hypothalamus one is affecting the water intake and second is affecting the urine output of water so that was about body water regulation next what is the function it is also important in regulation of food intake now this regulation of food intake i have made another video it is from the chapter of gaitan so please have a look on that video it's a very short crisp video on regulation of food intake from the entire chapter of gaitan okay fine in brief we will see here that in hypothalamus we have feeding center which is located in the lateral hypothalamus and we have the satiety center which is basically ventromedial nucleus now this feeding center is always active it is tonically active so when feeding center is active it will promote the behavior of feeding okay we will crave for food and we will do the motor behavior for the intake of the food but when we take the food what happens that there is increase in the glucose levels and this glucose stimulates the satiety center neurons now remember here that for this insulin is required so this is the only region of the brain that is the neurons where insulin is required otherwise the brain neurons do not require insulin for the use of the glucose so anyways we were talking that uh, with increase in glucose levels so the satiety center is stimulated and it in turn inhibits the feeding center so that stops the food intake understanding so what happens that if insulin is deficient you see even with hyperglycemia increase in glucose levels satiety center will not be stimulated and feeding center will be tonically active so that is why in diabetes mellitus we continuously feel hungry okay so in brief that was about the regulation of food intake by the hypothalamus where lateral hypothalamus is the feeding center and ventromedial nucleus is the satiety center moving on to the next function hypothalamus has a very important role in controlling our behavior and most importantly the emotional behavior so what we see that in hypothalamus if we stimulate various nuclei different nuclei we get different types of behavior for example when we stimulate the lateral hypothalamus there is increased behavior for our vegetative functions that is increased feeding increased thirst increased fighting behaviors increased anger 
on the other hand ventromedial nucleus when that is stimulated it promotes satiety there is peace tranquility okay so basically what we see here that hypothalamus is a output center for the limbic system so you see the decision of what is the nature of the effective nature of the stimulus is made by the amygdala for that you see my video on the limbic system but the output is made by hypothalamus understanding that is the output of the behavior okay so we have lateral hypothalamic nuclei and ventromedial nuclei then there is thin zone of periventricular nuclei which is important for various reward and punishment reactions basically from the hypothalamus the information is going to the brain stem areas the reticular areas okay reticular areas and uh, basically the mesencephalon where uh, dopaminergic neurons are there then uh, also the other areas that is the locus cerulus then rafe nucleus which are important for release of noradrenaline and serotonin they are stimulated and they in turn project to cortex understanding so our pleasure sensation which we get by the release of the dopamine then when there is emotional stimuli we feel highly activated sometimes maybe agitated right basically a state of arousal is there that is because of the diffuse release of norepinephrine throughout the cortex and then there is release of the serotonin which is important for elation of the mood so hypothalamic nuclei are also involved in reward and punishment reactions then there is the sexual drive and uh, we have seen that uh, various nuclei of the hypothalamus are involved in this sexual drive moving on to the next function that it is having autonomic control basically hypothalamus is known as the head ganglion for the control of the autonomic nervous system and uh, this circuit we have seen in the limbic system as well where uh, medial forebrain bundle connects the limbic cortex to the hypothalamus and from there the information is going to the reticular formation and as i told you that from the reticular formation there is release of uh, dopamine norepinephrine and serotonin to various areas of the cortex yes that is there but from here again the information also goes to intermedial lateral column of the spinal cord which leads to activation of the sympathetic system so that is one pathway second we also know that with the stimulation of the anterior hypothalamus okay there is a stimulation of parasympathetic system and with the stimulation of posterior hypothalamic nuclei there is activation of the sympathetic system okay sympathetic system so basically this parasympathetic and sympathetic system they get also activated or inhibited based on what emotions we are feeling that is why we get various bodily reactions that is the uh, visceral motor reaction maybe the movement of the git increase in the heart rate blood pressure to various emotions as well so in summary hypothalamus is the head ganglion for the control of the sympathetic and parasympathetic reactions and there are lot of stimuli from the body which impinge on the hypothalamus and there is integration of lot of stimuli at the level of the hypothalamus for the activation or inhibition of sympathetic and parasympathetic system finally moving on to the temperature regulation again i have made a detailed video on temperature regulation please have a look on that in brief anterior hypothalamus mainly the preoptic area responds to heat and thus leads to activation of the heat losing mechanisms from the body that is vasodilation then there is sweating okay and the behavioral change as well that is uh, your drive for switching on the fan for wearing lighter clothes that all comes because of the activation of anterior hypothalamus on the other hand posterior hypothalamus responds to cold so it leads to vasoconstriction what are the other uh, responses to cold it also leads to shivering okay and there is activation of non shivering thermogenesis as well and that is because of the release of the various hormones then again there is change in the behavior so you want to take the blanket and the curling position while sitting or sleeping so that change in behavior is also brought about by hypothalamus again just a reminder do see the complete video on temperature regulation
So this was all about the functions of hypothalamus and you see since this is a long question you have to detail all the functions of the hypothalamus. So whatever I have talked in other videos as well you integrate that part into the respective functions of the hypothalamus. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.